Welcome back. This is Stay 101 on Plus TV Africa. Our next guest is the project manager at V Bank, Karen Abba. Hello, Karen. Hi. Hi. Good How are you doing? I'm very well, thank you. How are you? I'm great. So we're here. Okay, so um, I would love to know, how would you describe the role or uh, digital has to play in this pandemic? Um, I think that the digital space is very important in this pandemic because people now more than ever need to be able to do things at their convenience without having to be anywhere physically. And especially in areas like banking and money transfers and doing certain transactions, it's so important that people can do that without having to be physically present or having to come in contact with anyone directly. So I think the digital space is very important in this pandemic. Talking about um, banking and the digital space, you work with Vim Bank, you're the project, project manager. And um, yes. it launched early this year and made a pandemic. As a project manager, would you, we would like to know, was this decision based on um, a foreseeable circumstances or is it just mere coincidence? I would say it's mere coincidence. Although it's a very good one, but it's mere coincidence. I mean, we actually had been working on this digital bank for the last two years. And we did something like a soft launch late last year, which was really just an internal launch for us to even see how it runs within ourselves. But the final launch, which was done, or the, the big launch, which was done in February, um, was really just a coincidence. We didn't really foresee it, um, this pandemic getting to this point, or actually this issue getting to the point of being called a pandemic. Um, so it didn't really play a role in when we launched or how we launched or even that we launched at all. It was really just a coincidence. Now that we are here, how would you rate the readiness of Nigerians in the acceptance of um, this virtual banking? I think now more than ever, even if they didn't want to accept it, they would have to. Um, I know that the younger generation is more open to a lot of the new technology that is available now and more open to the virtual space. But even now, the older generation is coming to the realization that so many things can be done more conveniently without actually having to be there. So I think that this pandemic is actually going to open a lot more, or rather going to expose a lot more people to the fact that, you know, the virtual space is what is coming and it's not going anywhere anytime soon. I like that you said even if they don't want to, they will have to. But I want to get um, that answer based on the statistics you have now and how people are interacting with the app VBank. Would you say Nigerians are ready? Considering that we have currently over 100,000 downloads, I would say Nigerians are ready. OK. So as a manager, how, what are the top decisions you've had to make this period? Well, again, for the VBank app, one of the or some of the tough decisions that we've had to make have to do with the release of new um, new features for the app. So when we initially launched, we had a plan of when we're going to have new releases and what features were going to be available based on each release. But now, because of this pandemic, we're having to push some of um, these releases out earlier and having to make some of these features available even earlier than we expected. And that on our part is a tough decision because this is this means we're, we're having to push the team more and we're having to work longer hours just to make sure that we can satisfy our clients. So, Okay, so in your own opinion and assessment, what have you identified as a loophole um, in decision making across board in the corporate world as regards tackling the pandemic? Hmm. I would look at it from the perspective of flattening the curve, which is really everyone sort of staying safe and not really going out much unless necessary. Um, I think even though that decision is definitely the best decision to make, it didn't take into consideration the fact that a lot of Nigerians earn daily wages and a lot of them, when they don't go out a day to hustle or to make money, they can't feed their families and they can't do anything. And that, I think, was a loophole, um, something we didn't really consider or the government didn't really consider when making the decision. But um, thanks to VBank and the village, you know, the village 
um, proposal, we are able to give people the opportunity to become agents on our platform and sort of build their own banks just by inviting other people and earn like commissions from 30,000 a month to even over 500,000 a month just on our platform. So I think we're sort of making use of that opportunity based on that loophole. So as a woman in your position, I mean, I, I can't help but bring that in. What have you found to be the elephant in the room in executing your roles? Hmm. I mean, I don't know about, I know about being a woman in my position in the V-Bank space. Mm -hmm. Because what I have found, or as it is in VFD Group and all the subsidiaries that fall under it, including V including V Bank, we do have quite a number of women in top level positions. And a lot of us started out when we were younger. I personally started as a young unmarried woman. I am now married with a child, and I don't think that that has in any way um, stopped my progress. We've always been treated as equals. We've always been pushed beyond limits. And we sort of never felt that whole thing of because you are female, there's something different. So I don't really know about the elephants in the room is not is not regarding me being a female at any point in time. Okay, that's interesting to know that you're working in an environment that is very inclusive. So, but imposter syndrome is said to be one of the major obstacles to career progression, especially for women. Did you see yourself exhibiting the syndrome? And if yes, how did you overcome? Yes, definitely. I did have imposter syndrome for a while. Um, when we first started talking about this digital bank, it was huge. And the fact that I was going to be project managing it just seemed like these people don't know what they are doing. They want, they want their thing to spoil, you know, that kind of thing. And I didn't really think that I could... Um, I didn't really think that I could do what they thought I could do. And at every point in time, I think I second-guessed myself. And even when, you know, we would reach a certain milestone and we would be talking about it, it still all seemed kind of surreal to me that I was even involved in the process, how much more handling the process. But like I said, my executives they push you beyond your limits, beyond what you think that you can do. If if anything, they sort of believe in you more than you believe in yourself. And I think that was what helped me get through it. I don't think I would have gotten through it if I did not get as much support and, you know, encouragement as I did from them. So that was what helped me put, get through it. Alongside, of course, being successful in the project and finally seeing that, you know, all my efforts was you know, met with success. Okay, so people are more worried right now and even confused, especially with, the, with their career choices. Um, how would you advise young people, especially girls, to prepare for the future as we approach this new normal? Hmm. I think based on my experience, I would advise young people, young girls as well, to not look down on the journey. I think... A lot of young people are in such a hurry these days to get to the destination. But in reality, when you even get to where you think you want to be, there's still somewhere better where you now realize you could be. So I think it's very important to pay attention to the journey, to not look down on small beginnings, to sometimes trust the process, and just really take it one step at a time um, and not rush. I think that's, that, that would be my advice to the young people. Okay, as much as there are job roles that are likely to be almost irrelevant in the next 10 years, there are also skills that would ensure job stability and career growth for a long time. What would some of those skills be for you? Hmm. There are many important skills. I think constant upgrade on my communication and people skills, but I think the most important one that would make me stay relevant in my field or in my career would be the ability to adapt to any changes, the ability to unlearn and relearn. Um, change is always constant, especially in the technology space. Um, so my ability to adapt to the changes, to constantly keep myself updated with those changes and be willing to learn new things every day 
the skill that I'm sure will keep me and anyone else relevant at all times. Thank you, Karen, for your time. Thank you for having me. Okay, and that's our conversation for today. I hope you learned something. For conversations such as this and more of our exclusive content, do visit our Plus TV Africa and subscribe. My name is Elsie Godwin. Do stay safe. Thank you.